Hi there, and welcome to the Love or Leave the Law podcast with your hosts, Adam Olette and Casey Berman. Well, when you talk about figuring out some of the things you might want to do, I love that you both discuss in your work the informational interviews. And I think that's an amazing way to, to get out and start talking to people uh, outside of the law about what they do and, and how, what do they do for work and how much time do they spend and what is their day-to-day work like. And I think that, to me, when you look at getting out and talking to people that may be in the, the areas of uh, expertise that you're looking at moving into, let's talk a little bit about how you both uh, counsel your, your clients in terms of what do you, how, how do you start the process. And, and I know, Liz, you go into this in depth in your book, so I if someone doesn't have it, they need to get it and start to read this because you outline it. But let's just touch real briefly in, in a big overview on how to start that process. Um, Casey, do you want me to start? Go ahead, please. Yes. Okay. So what the, the reason that most people hate informational interviewing is because they think they have to convince somebody else to give them a job. <laughs> not at all what you are trying to do when you have an informational interview. Your job is to listen. And right. if you've ever done a deposition, you, that's exactly what you're supposed to be doing. Yeah. You're supposed to be coming in prepared with a couple questions and listening to the answers and maybe asking a few follow-up questions. But you're keeping it nice and short because this is your research. Right. So people hate talking about themselves. People hate selling themselves. You're not doing that. Right. People hate, you know. Many people that I've worked with don't like the idea of going in and explaining how it is that they are leaving a career. No, you're not supposed to be talking about that. You're supposed to be asking the person that you're interviewing to talk about themselves. That's right. And who and, doesn't want to talk about themselves, right? It's yeah. pretty. We do. Yeah. We don't like to sell ourselves, but we'll talk about ourselves all day long, right? Or we don't like to but, sell what we've got to offer. But the flip side, when we talk about ourselves, this, this is what I teach people when I teach people how to network in general, is that it's not about you. It's about them. And it never is about you. It's, they want to talk about them, and you find out more about them. And, and that's how you connect with people, too. And that's what I mean is for the other person, it's so easy, Liz, because if you, if you are doing an informational interview about someone in, you know, fill in the blank industry, if you were to ask this person, hey, thanks for getting a cup of coffee. I know we got 20 minutes. Thank you for taking the time. You're so-and-so's friend. Um, tell me about yourself. What's your day-to-day like? Yeah. And just stop. That person will talk and will talk. They will talk about themselves, they, whether for ego reasons or because they want to help, and you just need to sit and listen. And, and it's about research, and then I add this step, which I think you do, Liz, is it's about getting a lead. So if after listening, if you don't like the job, if it sounds horrible, scratch it off your list. But if you do like it, then the next question is, thank you for your time. I want to let you get back to the office. Is there anyone else you know in this space who I could talk to? Absolutely. And you build the network. Some people respond, some don't. But before you know it, after a month or two or three or four, you've met with 8, 10, 20 people. And all of a sudden, that opportunity where they say, you know what? There's something coming up at our company. And you just create opportunities. Yeah, it's a very easy way to develop your network. And so when you prepare to go talk to somebody, you've got a couple things you need to do in the front end. You've got a couple things you need to do in the back end. Before you go in, you... Do your research on LinkedIn. You learn what you can about this person's background so you're not asking them to tell you stuff you could easily have found out on your right, own. Right, exactly. You have a couple questions, because that's insulting, right? You have a couple questions, like the one Keith, you just said, Casey, tell me about your day-to-day. What's the best part of your job? What's the worst part of your job? What do you wish you had known? A couple questions, not too many, because you don't want to go over your 15, 20-minute time that's limit. Right. That's not going to their day, and you don't want to do that. Right. So, Go in with your questions, and then on the back end, last question, as Casey, as you just said, who else would you recommend I speak with? Mm-hmm. And then you go, you write your thank you note. That's right. Thank now, Liz, the, the introvert, the introverted attorney who's listening now, who, <laughs> yes, you're pointing to yourself, you know, the, the, the patent law, the person who wants to sit behind a Word doc all day, who doesn't want, how, how do they do this? It is, it is focusing on your questions to go in. It is you are learning about somebody else. You are not taking up very much of their time. You know that because you're carefully circumscribing your your limit. You are meeting them when it's convenient for them and where it's convenient for them. So you know that you are minimizing the burden to them. Right. Also, you keep in mind the fact 
people, while they hate having their day interrupted, kind of like to do favors for other people. As if they are not lawyers, I'm just saying that it is much more common outside the legal profession to like to help other people. So don't worry so much. And, and usually you've met this person through your network, through a friend of a friend. I know I've introduced a lot of clients to people. So the person you're meeting with and learning about usually has a connection with someone you know. It's a warm lead and they're happy to help many of them. And if they're not, you'll learn right away and they're not going to help you anyway and you just move on. But um, this, the, the point is introverts can do this. Oh, yeah. oh, absolutely. Oh yeah. I'm a huge introvert. And that's, I wrote this, I wrote an entire chapter in my book about doing this for introverts because yeah. I know how painful this can be. Yeah. People don't want to meet with you. They won't meet with you. Yeah. And it's okay to have a you know, fairly high rate of non-response to the emails that you send out and right. emails that you send out. That's okay. You yeah. would rather talk to people who are willing to give you 20 minutes of their time and another connection. Right. Well, and the, what's the worst that happens? They don't respond at all or they say no. Move on. Just continue on down your list. They're, they're not going to hurt you. They're not going to physically hurt you. Maybe, well, I've had some people in, in my networking, uh, you know, give me the middle finger and say, leave me alone. I mean, not really. So, but but that's the worst that they could actually do to you is to say no. So being an introvert, I, I'm a little bit of one myself. And once I got out and started doing networking as a lawyer early on, I left it behind because I said, it's just, this isn't going to serve me in terms of my broader perspective and growing my firm and all that. And it, it's okay to be an introvert, but understand that when you're going to these interviews or even when you're talking with someone that could be a referral partner for you as a lawyer, uh, is that it, you need to connect with them in a way. And then the follow-up. I love that you said this uh, in your book, Liz, and you just said it, it, it get some note cards and do some kind of handwritten note or even, you know, printed, but handwriting a note. Nobody does this anymore. And it's so powerful to yeah. get something in the mail from someone that they took a few minutes to do instead of just an email or a text, which is the, the, the basic uh, responses that we do nowadays is emails, everything and text to a smaller extent. But it's that handwritten note that really could put you over the top. And so let me just say one thing about this. And then I want to move into talking about the challenges for women lawyers, because I think this is a very underserved uh, area of, of problems that are happening out there. And women need more help because there are some real challenges for women in, in the system that we've set up as, as uh, lawyers in the legal profession. But when you connect with other people, it's valuable to write down what you, you've learned about them. And then what you're doing is you're putting a little nugget in their mind. This is any kind of networking. And in, in the networking we just talked about in terms of these inter, uh, informational interviews is very similar to what I teach. And, and that is tell someone what you're looking for if you know. Because what happens is if then they, they'll remember or they meet someone new yeah. and they'll remember you. And that's the that's thing. Right. When I was out networking as a lawyer and when I'm out networking now as a trainer for lawyers, I tell people that 30 second commercial, what is it that I'm really looking for? That way you spark a memory in someone's mind. You know what? I remember meeting this Casey guy and yeah. you guys would be so amazing together. And that's, and that, meant, you know, people want to refer and connect other people. This is human nature. And so it is. put yourself in a position where yes, you're asking them questions. It's all about them. But before you leave or before you disconnect from them somehow, um, let them know kind of what you're looking for. That way they can have that in their subconscious so it'll pop up at the right time so that they can connect you with those right kind of people. That's a good, that, that's, that's a good thing to do if you can do it. That's but right, if you're at that point. Exactly. Yeah, I think one, one of the, the, maybe the last thing that I wanted to add about introverts is that it could be encouraging to remember that during this informational interview, you will be doing very little of the talking. That's, that's right. That's, that's very huge. Little of the talking. And so yeah, if you know what it is that you want, it is great to say that if somebody asks you yeah. directly. But when you start the process, you may not, you may know not have a clue. You know. Right. You may not know. And that's, that's completely fine. It would not be good to go into an informational interview and say, I'm looking for a job where I can use my management skills. Yeah. Do you yeah. have a job Agreed. for me? But then you don't yeah. ever want to ask anybody for a job. However, what you just said, Adam, about being able to say what you want was helped me get my first job after mm -hmm. I left my law firm. So 
I absolutely had that experience. It's a process for sure. And, and, and if you're not in the, the stage of knowing exactly what you want to tell people, the thing is when you've done all these informational interviews and you've come back, like what I would do is I come back to the office and now we could put it in the computer. But back when I first started practicing 20 years ago, I didn't have this capability, but I would come back and I would take their card and I would write something about them. They're, did they tell me about their wife, their, their husband, their children, anything that I could have so that when the time came where I wanted to reach back out to them, when, so let's talk, let's put it in a perspective of, of, of okay, now I kind of know what I want to do. You've got all these people lined up and you can say, Oh, let me go back to such and such. And let me say, let me send them a little handwritten note saying, you know what? I really appreciated meeting you months ago. Uh, if you ever run into anybody that uh, could help me, here's what I'm looking to do. That's that right. is the way to then follow up after the fact. So, and I've added in the beginning for, for anybody introverts or not, but when they're starting can say, look, I, I really enjoy being an attorney. I have an understanding of what my skills are here, but I got to be honest with you. I really think based on my research that um, my skills might be a better fit in another role. Uh, your role, Mr. Mrs. So-and-so in such and such space seems based on my research to fit with it. I wanted to talk to you and get the real life lowdown. Like, Tell me more. And yeah, then perfect. you can build on and they can see that, you know, you're not just coming and wasting their time, but you're doing your own research. You're doing a real reassessment of your career and your skills and that, you know, you're not really messing around. Like you are doing the due diligence here and they're part of your due diligence. And then you kind of have an open invitation to follow up with them a month later, two months later, six months later. Yeah. And what is so great, one of the things that is so great about what you just said is that you're focusing on positive stuff. You're focusing on positive change. You're not going in there saying, I hate my job. Right. You know, you're not doing anything. You're thinking creatively about what else you could do. You know, so that's great. No, it's huge. You don't want to go in going, I hate the law, but I love what you do. No, it's not. <laughs> that's right. That's so right. let's move into talking about some challenges and then some alternatives for women lawyers. I'm seeing a lot more consultants and coaches pop up that only work with women lawyers. And I've talked to some of them uh, on Skype and, and had some phone calls with some of them because I, I really think there's a need for this. Uh, women lawyers need to get help in furthering their career and dealing with these challenges that you talk about in your book, Liz. Um, tell us more about just a, a brief overview of, of some of the challenges. And if you can give any women lawyers that are listening to this podcast some nuggets of advice to take away from uh, this time we've spent together, what would, it, what would it be? The same rules apply to you as to anybody else. But if I understand that there is an extra layer of challenge for yeah. women lawyers who are leaving because of my own experience, because of all the women that I've worked with, it can be found in this additional dimension. You know, there's all this sexism, and misogyny that comes out in many, many ways that people still aren't talking about in law firms. They're just, yeah. I mean, ever since I started working in law firms, I would hear these conversations about how can we make things better for women and how can we increase retention and how can we, and I always went to those panels and I went to those discussions and I went to those networking events and seriously, I was in that for 12 years and not one thing changed. Not one thing changed. The percentage of equity partners hasn't changed. It's not moving. Yeah. And so it, I think it's, it's extremely hard for women. I think that there are um, ways that women can leave the law that look less, how should I say this, suspicious, that are more socially acceptable than there are for men. Um, a woman who takes maternity leave and doesn't come back doesn't have the same sort of aura of a wonder why she's leaving, you know, as a man might, which is a shame for men, right? right. So it's, it's an additional opportunity and challenge. So, you know, I think that maybe the biggest problem for women is who are trying to take care of their, you know, their kids take care of their family because no matter what we say about should be everybody's job it's women are still doing most of the housework women are still doing yeah. child care the social presumption is still it's going to be the mother that you call from school rather than the father separate issue so whether that's obviously that's not good but while it is what it is you know women who have to get everything done in the rest of their lives and then be really efficient at their jobs 
can't be, don't get reward for that productivity because you still are going to have to build the same number of hours as everybody else. The fact that they get the work done faster, the fact that they have to get the work done faster isn't rewarded or recognized. It's almost punished. So, you know, yeah. one, yeah. And I, I helped a, uh, I think you're, you're totally right on. And I, a client I worked with last year who I'm actually going to get coffee soon this week with, who I'm very excited. She was a, a mother of uh, of three mid forties uh, attorney in in California State. I mean, she was just how she going to leave, right? You know, a state attorney. Um, she would do these long trials on behalf of the state. And what we were able to do to go back to your point about portable skills, about transferable skills, is managing senior attorney managing these ten month long trials was just like logistics or operations. Right. And um, and so she now is is director of operations for a tech company here that that does fashion online it's just fantastic she loves her job and I think that like you said the the same rules apply there's a lot of sexism uh, within the legal industry as and within the whole world but you know one thing that I experienced with working with her was that when she entered in a new industry there she had the skills she had kind of the gray hair and was sort of, you know, the older executive there was the adult in the room. And there was, you know, her skills really spoke for themselves. And um, she's become a leader at the company. And it's just, it's just fantastic. And, uh, you know, it can, it can be done. And I think also, you know, when it comes to kind of how do you do this and a gap in your resume or how do I leave, you know, it's kind of a badge of honor, at least here in Silicon Valley, if you take some time off it, it showed you made some money and you can afford to do it. It showed that you don't really care what other people think and you just took your time. So I like to... That's not true. What? That's not true the rest of the country. You know that, right? Right, yeah. <laughs> and so I, I want... When people ask me, what about that gap on my resume? I want to start people saying, you know what? Like, let's flip this. Like, let's... It's hard. Don't get me wrong. But let's flip this and be authentic with ourselves and try this because... When you speak that way, your tribe will 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 they'll resonate. You will find those people who align with you, Absolutely. and you know. So, yeah, I will also say that there are genuinely supportive programs for women in other industries and in consulting. PLEC has a model program. That's right. You know, and so all these things that law firms have been trying to develop, other places have been actually developing. Right. So, no, I'm not. There is certainly sexism everywhere. But for example, when I went to when I took the job that I have now, I teach business law. I found that I was working for a working mother, and when I said, you know, I'd really love it if you miss my classes so that I can pick up my kid from school, I wouldn't have even felt comfortable making that request wow. in a law firm. And now she was like, "No problem, we can totally do that." Yeah. So, yeah. so much is so much more is possible um, in in other cultures, other more evolved professional cultures. And, and I'm saying that outside of the law, where we look at not only transferring our skills, but there's just there's just different mindsets out there. There's just like you talked about, like I've seen. There's just different things are. There's different priorities. There's different means. There's different nuances. There's different mores out there. That there's less testosterone. Um, what'd you say? There's less testosterone. I mean, yeah. I'm sorry to have to say it, but which isn't yeah. a bad thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so when it comes to it, I mean, my take, what, where I've advised is that to be authentic, be sincere, but realize that it is possible. There's less testosterone in other industries. There's, there's more open-mindedness. Um, what else, Liz? What, are we, what did I miss? There's more collaboration. There's yeah. more willing to work with each other to take things on because there's less internal competitiveness. There's, yeah. If you've yeah. been in litigation particularly, you're in a culture of competing. You're competing with the other side, but you're also competing to, you know, Next partner, and so in other, I'm not saying that other businesses aren't competitive, but there's more of an emphasis on teamwork and what can we do to help everybody get ahead. And that subtle difference can make a big difference. In terms yeah, it's of not a, it's not about the billable hour, the, the the holy grail of the billable hour in, in other industries like it is in the law. It's prevalent clearly, 
Uh, yeah, you know, that's a great, I just want to quick, and I know we're, we're coming to the end, but you know, Liz, end. that is a huge, huge point that other industries, even within a law firm, there's still that internal fighting or the who's one upping or who's the better partner and so on, you know, within other industries. And I've experienced firsthand, there's just more collaboration. Mm -hmm. You just work as a team. You just scratch each other's backs and that's just accepted. Yeah. Business schools teach teamwork. I mean, I teach in a business school now and it's, it's an element of the curriculum it, that translates to what happens in your career afterward. You know, when I was in law school, people were stealing each other's notes. So yeah, that's just my law school. But I'm saying that it's a very different culture. Yeah. Difference. It's huge. Last but not least, let's talk a little bit about the opportunities that women have for uh, working with like a virtual law firm or freelance networks that, that I feel are going to be the disruptors that really take on the legal industry and, and change us in dramatic ways. Uh, I think this is a possibility for women that want to have families and want to set their own schedules and, and not work in big firms. And, and I, after I read this in your book, Liz, I looked up online in Florida, what kind of virtual law firms were there? And there is distinct possibilities for people to set these up and also be part of them so that they can get paid by the hour and they can work at their own schedules. Tell us a little bit more about what you know of, about that. Yeah, there are law firms that are emerging all over the country. There's a, there are nationwide networks, but there are more often regional networks that are good for anybody who wants to have a more flexible work schedule, who has maybe got you know a year or two or more of firm experience, but wants to go out and continue to practice law with the support of a team. That's right. Administrative support. Yeah doesn't feel like they need to be, you know, in an office with other people. There are more opportunities to practice law like that, to practice law flexibly. If you still want to practice law, but the problem is the structure, to do that than ever before. And that's not just for women, of course. Yeah, right. For anybody who wants that flexibility. I mean, women have sort of led the charge in developing these and taking advantage of these and stigmatizing these. But my hope is that everybody will feel like that's a viable option and you can make very good money sure. and set sure. a, a great schedule and so yeah. if you just if you just want to step away from the firm the office the billable tight billable hour requirement but you still love practicing law the good news is that there's many more ways to do that now than there were five or ten years ago sure yeah. All right. Any parting thoughts? We're getting towards the end and I know you got to get going, Liz. We appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule because we know you are busy, but uh, any parting yeah. thoughts you have for uh, anybody listening? You can absolutely do this. You can do this. It is realistic. It is pragmatic. There are concrete steps that you can take to start doing it. And it is so worthwhile. It is so transformative to love what you do every day. And I know that because I love what I do every day. Mm -hmm. I have, in addition to the counseling clients that I do, which I do because I love it, I have a job that I get so excited to go to, you know, every day. I get, I don't think of it, as you guys were saying in a previous podcast, I don't think of it as a job. I don't think of it as, you know, work. I think I get to go do this really fun thing, which for me is teaching. Which yeah. is, I'm, a, I'm a college and MBA student professor. And love what I do. Beautiful. That joy is absolutely realistic for everybody. For you, if you yeah. just take the, take the time and take a little bit of calculated, really actually kind of minimal risk to step outside what you've been doing and see what else is available. You can do yeah. it. Beautiful, beautiful. Well, LizBrownJD.com. We'll put the link. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube and uh, even on uh, iTunes, we'll put the link for her book. Thank you so much. Casey, anything you want to say to take us out? Liz, thank you. Uh, your book's been an inspiration uh, to me. I know to so many others. I, I mentioned earlier and just so happy to have you. We hope you have you, – you come back to our podcast and talk more about it. And uh, everyone, thank you for being part of our audience. Uh, we're all, as you can see, on a mission – uh, to help attorneys be happy, to help us really reach our potential in alignment with jobs, whether in the law or out of the law, because, you know, we can really make the world in a real micro way or in a macro way better. So, um, but Liz, thank you so much. Just really, really appreciate you uh, sharing your, your insights. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. And thank you guys so much for the work you're doing. It's all right. Oh, thanks. thanks. All right, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>